Hi there, and welcome to Mendel Plays. In my All Achievements or Bust run, I ended up doing a single four and a half hour session. I did it in a single session because I didn't want to break the focus that I had in trying to ensure that I was going to get Carnivore by cycle 100. I was working on a few different things during this 50-ish cycle period, so I thought that instead of going back and forth between the various things I was doing through this time period, I would instead edit this to focus on the individual projects instead. In this episode, I'm going to focus on the taming of the cool salt slush geyser, which is a very useful tool to have in your base to deal with temperature management. Cool salt slush geysers erupt liquid at negative 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see here a setup of a pit that I'm building beneath the cool salt slush geyser and walls that reach up to the top. I built it up that high to make sure that if for some reason the amount of brine started to get too high, that the geyser would overpressurize before spilling over and getting brine in parts of the base that I might eventually not want to have. As I was tidying up and carving out the area that I was building here, I ended up noticing that there was another geyser I earmarked to dig that out a little bit later, once I had more of this build complete. The primary motivation behind doing this at this point in my base was to help with oxygen production. What I'm building here is what's called a self-powered oxygen machine, or a SPOM. The components inside of the SPOM are best built with gold amalgam, and because I had yet to dig out any gold amalgam, I needed to go dig out some gold amalgam in order to make the elements inside. This is primarily to prevent overheating. This particular spawn design is called a Half Rodriguez, which was designed and named by Francis John. This build is self-powered through using a combination of gas pumps, electrolyzers, and automation. Electrolyzers take in water and produce a combination of oxygen and hydrogen. This game recognizes different density of gases, so for example, carbon dioxide always drifts to the bottom, and hydrogen drifts up to the top. The hydrogen is routed into a hydrogen generator, to power the machinery, and the oxygen you can route however you want to be able to route it. The nature of the build itself means that you don't have to use any of the three methods of filtering that I discussed in my three levels video to ensure that oxygen and hydrogen are going down the right pipe. So I'm building some piping here to grab from the large water pool. I'm making that pipe out of regular pipe as opposed to insulated pipe to help do some initial cooling off of the oxygen that comes out of the electrolyzers. I'm taking the oxygen that's going to be coming from those two outer gas pumps and I'm snaking them around the cool salt slush geyser with insulated pipe and then snaking radiant pipe that will contain the incredibly cold brine. Because the radiant pipe allows for a greater heat transfer between its contents and the environment surrounding it, the brine will get warmer and the oxygen that's in the pipes will get cooler. The upper gas pump that's taking in hydrogen, I'm going to route at first through a single gas storage container and then into hydrogen generators that will self-power this entire build. I also have a manual generator set up in here to start the process going because it takes a little while before the pressure of the hydrogen builds up to the right degree to ensure that hydrogen is going to be the only thing that comes into that area. You can see that this middle gas pump is surrounded by two doors. What's going to happen is that once this system is up and running, enough hydrogen is going to be produced that it's going to occupy the entire ceiling of this building. And when it does that, no oxygen can get into the inside of the one tile space above the two doors. This ensures that the only thing that that middle gas pump will pump out is hydrogen. Once I closed up the build, it was time to feed the electrolyzers the water that I needed in order to get them functional. And once I started that, I realized that I completely forgot to add in the necessary automation to ensure that the pumps only ever worked at a time when I needed it to. So I deconstructed this corner that I had just closed up, went back in, added the necessary automation that I should have put there in there in the first place, and then I revacuumed out the area before feeding the electrolyzers again and getting this going for real. The oxygen that comes out of this build starts at about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see that once it reaches the end of this radiant pipe snake, that about 100 degrees Fahrenheit has been removed from the oxygen that comes through. And that's before the cool salt slush geyser even erupts a high volume of brine. Now that I had this electrolyzer set up running, it meant that I could deconstruct the three oxygen diffusers that I had been using for oxygen up to this point. 
that's pretty great because the oxygen diffusers are not very efficient, and I want to hold on to the algae to jumpstart any Paku breeding in the future. Another nice thing about this spawn setup is that it produces more hydrogen than it uses to sustain itself. So I decided to route any excess hydrogen that would be produced into a different hydrogen generator that could be plugged into my main grid. I wanted the location to be somewhat out of the way, but not so far that the dupes would have to travel a long distance in case there were any issues. I considered this area to be a temporary spot to hold this until I built my larger centralized power room. Having the electrolyzer set up allowed me to get the next colony achievement, which is to distribute 1,000 kilos of oxygen through pipes. There's already an excess of hydrogen in this gas reservoir, which I was definitely looking forward to using. With all of that now set in place, I decided to go and dig up that buried object that I had seen earlier. I decided because the salt water here was fairly warm that I didn't want to mix it in with the cold brine I had coming out of the cool salt slush geyser. Digging into the area close to that buried object ended up revealing that it was a volcano. So now I have a cool salt slush geyser, a hydrogen vent, and a volcano within a very small space. It turned out that I had unburied my cool salt slush geyser fairly late within its active cycle. You can see the big difference between the upper versus lower set of radiant pipe and what that is doing to the surrounding area. I knew that I could just be patient and just wait for the active cycle to come in 70 cycles later. The oxygen was still getting cooled down enough. I could ride that out until the geyser's next active phase. I think that's about it for this particular build. The next episode, I'm going to focus on this session again, except from the perspective of going through and managing the carnivore achievement. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you found this useful. I welcome any feedback, suggestions, or comments about the build or about the way that I'm doing these episodes. And I appreciate all the views and the support that I've gotten to date. Insert your standard like and subscribe ask here. There are more ways for you to support me more directly as my new life as a freelancer by going to my Ko-Fi page and throwing me a tip or by supporting some of my various creative endeavors, particularly in new music composition. Thanks again, and please feel free to tell me your story because no matter who you are, I would definitely love to hear it.